walking now on an absolutely monumental embankment of all the old railways and canals we've seen I don't think I've seen an embankment this big it's huge and ahead of me is a 200 year old structure just over 200 years old linked to this embankment still in use today and still carrying the Grand Union Canal over the Great River Ouse So here's a quick map of where we are today. That is indeed the Grand Union Canal and it's a section that runs adjacent to Milton Keynes between Cosgrove and Wolverton. Right, to get the best view of that structure just there, well, we're gonna to have to head down the embankment. As I say, it is rather train-like in its construction, this embankment, it's huge. And just looking at that picture there, well, you'd expect to see a train running over the cross across the top. I'll have a look through that tunnel in a minute, another, uh, another horse tunnel taking us across to the other side. Now, the view I'm looking at right now, that 200 year old structure, you'd expect that for its age to be here since the construction and the opening of the Grand Union Canal. But that wasn't the case, that wasn't here when the canal opened. To take a look at exactly why and what was here, let's have a look at the map room. Welcome to Map Room. Here is a printout of a local OS map and that will show us the geography of the area we're looking at today. Take a look. And whilst you do that, I'm going to head through that tunnel. To the north, the Grand Union Canal sits on around the 75 metre contour. And of course, just a mile to the south at Wolverton, it sits on around 75 to 80 meter contour. Now Jessup wanted to build his canal across this valley without losing any height. It's gonna take a monumental embankment and he wanted to build in the middle, the free arched aqueduct. That's gonna take quite a while and it's gonna be one heck of an undertaking. So we are gonna need nine locks to get us up and down the valley as a temporary measure. Now, those locks were in place from 1800. So exactly how long did the embankment and the aqueduct take? 1805, they built these huge embankments and the free arch aqueduct that sat in the middle. This section with all the locks became abandoned, but not completely because pretty soon disaster was about to strike. Now, speaking of disaster, my job today was going to be to try and find this abandoned route down here below the Grand Aqueduct now, but I have a bit of a water problem myself. Which is a shame because in the distance I can see an old lock. Really good to get there, but I'm going to have to go right up and I'll across the embankment and back down. Now, speaking of the embankment, within six months of this new embankment and the new free arch aqueduct opening, well, part of the embankment collapsed and it cut off that canal. Again, some serious uh, trade lost over that short period of time. But once again, disaster was about to strike. Three years later, February 1808, this time a lot more serious because the free arch aqueduct, that suffered a serious collapse itself beyond repair. So once again, the boats were back using the abandoned section with the nine locks. A solution was needed. What staggers me the most about that route, about the original route, is after traversing maybe four locks this side, five locks that side to get down to the Great River Ooze level, is the boats actually crossed the water. They crossed the river here. Apparently it was quite treacherous and you can see exactly why. Look how fast and how heavy and high the river is today. That's quite staggering. But the year is now 1810 and technology in terms of canal building and infrastructure has moved on. So what have we got next to try and solve this problem? I walked down the wrong side of the embankment. Thankfully it's been cleared recently. Um, probably not supposed to be here because there is no pathway. Um, now it's like we're at the back of some yard. Not really where I wanted to be. We have to turn back. Well, the pathway now looks to be completely blocked off. So if you didn't do what I just did, then I don't know how you're going to see these locks. But let's take a walk down here 
and see what we can find. So technology had moved on and we now have uh, Telford's aqueduct over the river turn. Telford and Jessup himself have now built and designed the, uh, the famous huge aqueduct over the River D. I'm not going to pronounce the name and embarrass myself. So now is about the time for the, the Grand Union Canal to have a new technology over the Great River Ouse. And whilst I was just trying to find the line of that uh, original route down here with the locks, lo and behold, right ahead of me now is one set of locks. And goodness me, they look abandoned in the truest sense. Look at this. Quite a short lock. Um, what's fascinating is I guess they've been done up a little bit and then fallen back into disrepair because the locks that went out of use in around 1810, 1811, in pretty good nick. 210 years old or restored? I think restored. In fact, there's a sign here that says so. And there it is. Perhaps the one surviving lock of uh, this section of abandoned canal, abandoned very early on. And uh, here I am back the other side of where I was earlier. I'm not gonna try wading through that because um, probably a good foot deep and I haven't got my wellies today. So I've managed to get back over this side of the canal, the correct side really, the towpath side. The year is 1811, three years after the collapse and the disaster in February 1808. And we've now have a new technology on the Grand Union Canal. We now have almost like a bathtub shape with no end. A trunk, the iron trunk has been deployed, but this one needed new challenges. Moved on from the, 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 the River D aqueduct and the one over the river turn because this canal could already take wide beam. So here we are back on top of the extremely windy iron trunk just ahead of us. And if you already have a canal that's built for a wider beam boat, well then you need to build a wide beam trunk. It had arched flooring. It had specially made arched ribs on its side. And once again, technology had moved on in that short space of time. And testament to that, here we are 210 years on and it's still in use and still looks as good as probably as it ever did. And I'll leave you with that beautiful but yet wet image of the Ouse Valley Country Park, sat above the Great River Ouse, and right next to me, the Grand Union Canal. See you this time next week. Hope you've enjoyed today's little adventure.